Guess who's back? Back again. Mom is back. Tell your friends. Mom is back. 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 Subscribe! Welcome back to Big Mama's house, y'all. Mama and Papa are here with you today to talk about Welcome to Plotville, Season 6, Episode 2. What up? Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome we, back. We hope you've had a wonderful week. Let us know what's been happening in your world. I mean, I know there's a lot of stuff going out there besides this little bitty place in the Midwest. Maybe we got listeners from around the world. Let us know what's happening in your corner of the world this week. Let, come on, guys. Let's get those comments going, get some interaction. We want to hear from you. There's not much going on around here. No, so maybe there's something going on somewhere else. Yes. Okay, so a little bit of a spoiler, you guys. I, I know I said no spoilers, but when I can give you guys a little bit of a one-up on other people or whatever, I will. Um, so Micah's mysterious girlfriend is a mystery no longer. Her name is Veronica Peters. We have a picture of her. Um, we're going to put up in the rotation so that you guys can watch the video. I think we already have one, like, of, like, the left side of her body or something. Wait, because the numbers in the bathroom, yeah. like, the hair was yeah. kind of over her face. But, yeah, it, it, it's, her name's Veronica Peters. She works in, uh, she's a real estate advisor for luxury wow. homes. Basically, I think she's, like, a decorator, you know? Yeah, she makes decent money, I guess. Well, I mean, to live in L.A., you kind of have to. And to have the, a nice home like she does, you kind of have to. I mean, that little bitty place that she has is probably a half a million dollars in L.A. Yeah, probably. Uh, so there you go, guys. A little bit of a spoiler. Hope that makes your guys be like, oh, cool, we know who it is. Um, so the show opens up with uh, Ethan and Olivia still talking about their divorce. <sighs> and she's over it. And Ethan's literally quote, he says, I can't. It's six months, right? I think at this point they said it's been nine months. Nine months? Since they separated. That's even worse. Yeah. Um, and w let's be real. He still loves her. He's not one to give up or give in easily. Whenever he makes a commitment, he believes you have to follow through, especially in the eyes of God. She doesn't love him. Oh, no. And she, she quoted, I've moved on. I'm done. Yeah. And then he offers to like, like, hey, can we just wait a few more months? Like, see, you know, things change where we're at. And she's like, nope. I mean, there could be a chance for them in the future down the road. No, 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 no. no. If you spoil. I'm not spoiling nothing. nothing. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. I apologize, my love. Sorry. Just, but everybody knows you like to jump ahead sometimes. All I'm saying is that if he has this puppy dog attitude, she's not going to want nothing to do with him. Yeah. She, she needs to pick his balls up and stop yeah. begging. Yes. I agree with you. About That's that. what I mean. Okay, sorry. I apologize. I love you. Come on, grumpy. Sorry, it's after 10 o'clock here in the Midwest, and it's it's past our bedtime. We're old. Um, So Ethan just straight up says, I can't sign this right now. I can't. Because, like, she popped up supposedly and as a surprise, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And kind of sprung this on him. Even though, I mean, you know it's coming, but, it's like, until someone, like, knocks on your door out of the blue, I mean, that would throw you for a bit of a loop. Who knows? He might have found out, like, a half hour before or something. Yeah, but still, probably not much notice. Not really much, no. Get himself prepared yeah. or whatever. And we all know Ethan is one of those people that needs to repair his feelings and, you know, deals, you know, kind of sort through things in his well, Especially time. since he still loves her. Exactly. I mean... And I don't even know if he still loves her. I mean, it, he, she's his first... Everything. And, and first of all, only, all right, girlfriend, slash wife, slash... The only girl that we're held in the hands with. Exactly. So, he doesn't know what it's like without her. We all feel that way about our first love. You know, you're like, you feel like you're going to die. He's in his over. 20s, though. But he's, he's not like teens. But they've never had those life experiences as teenagers, so they're kind of living their teen years now. That's what I'm saying. So it's going to be a lot harder for him. Yes. See, Olivia is a totally different than Ethan. Right? She's, she's already moved on. She's yeah. already got a boyfriend. She's dating, I think, because there's been a whole thing about her having a man now. I don't know if it's, it happened at the point where this was recorded, but currently now she yeah. has a boyfriend. But you don't hear anything about him on this episode. Not yet, no. But he's he's just shattered. I just, I, I, he just needs to... Because he's straight up said the only thing he did in that entire time that she was gone was go to work, work on his cars, and go to the gym and hang out with family. That's it. He had no social life outside of those little circles. He should have went to the bar a few times. 
Well, I'm sure he did with his buddies, but not I to pick up karaoke. women. Like, like you. Karaoke. I like you, sir. What? Picking up all the ladies in the bars. Not in 30 years. <laughs> oh, anyway. So then we move on to Kim and Ken, and they're riding on four wheelers at Ken's house. Um, and my first thought as a mom, safety person, was neither one of them were wearing helmets. Maybe it was just because of the fact that they were going slow just for recording, you know, because they're both obviously made up. She had her full makeup and hair done, you know. And she's not used to riding one of those anyway. She even says that. Yeah, it's like a new thing, fun yeah. thing for her, mm -hmm. you know. Um, which but is that's, great. That's awesome that she gets to do something fun. It's weird, though, that they have all that land, all right, and they never had a full wheeler. And because they're always they're like about low tech. Remember, it was like it's still they a four wheeler. Had, they had a horse, and they took walks, and they they still had cars. They're not they weren't Amish. Yeah, but um, I just don't understand. I know this is back in season one for Pete's sake. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, but I mean, they could have had those. Is what I'm saying. It's not a computer. It's yeah, but a, when you have like all these kids, and it's very expensive. Those things are expensive, you know. And so they were using all their money just to feed and clothe their children. I know, but I'm saying it's, it's weird that she's what, probably in her, where she's in her 40s, 50s? 40s. 40s, and she's never ridden a four-wheeler until now? I think mean, that's awesome. She, I mean, new, no, no, she's no. also getting to live life and have experience. I'm not saying anything, anything bad about it. She's not it's, anything new since college. I'm not saying anything know? bad about it, but for those people, that whole family and being outside all the time. Yeah. You know, climbing trees and doing things. But not with... But not four-wheeling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just weird. Again, I think opinion. it's a money situation. Um, but, but still, it's weird. Um, but that was just my thought. No helmets, but I don't think maybe it's just for recording. But I hope that in real life that they're really riding out there. Did, her, helmets. did her four wheeler look bigger than his? What's his name again? Dan? Ken. Ken. Did, did, did hers look bigger than Ken's? Maybe, yeah. I mean, because I mean, they come in different sizes. Well, it's probably for safety reasons, too, probably. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? More, more weight, you know, unless it's going to like tip over, I guess, probably. Well, and maybe just hers is more high powered and she wants to go faster. Maybe. Because, you know, new. It's fine. Yeah. Who knows? They don't do that. But they said they both enjoyed the outdoors. Um, And it seems to be that they were filming this last fall, 2023. Um, They wore jackets and they were like brush, yeah. brush and like making like a bull bonfire type of thing. I think it's like September is maybe actually it's even because I thought it was six months. It might even be later than September. I don't know. But it looked like it was somewhere time in the fall, yeah. like chilly area. So and they say that Ken offered for Kim to move in with him. But in my opinion, I think she was smart and she chose independence. She didn't go straight from one man her father from one man's house to another man's house. Yeah. She I mean the boat may not be much, but it's what she can afford. It's, it's what she can manage. And it's her independence. Yeah. So I think that was a very smart on her part that, yes, she likes Ken, but she knows, hey, I just got out of a long term relationship because I need to grow. And I don't want to be like, like, you know, like tied down to like, yes, she's with him, but she can still do her own thing. And that way she's not forcing her kids on him, too, when she's living there and the kids stay with her. You yes. know, they're not forced to, to be with Ken. Well, and they say that at that point when this was filmed last fall, they've been together for a year and a half. So, and they, and they, they all like each other. And but, they even talk about yeah. how um, the divorce has been going on for two years now. Barry hasn't of changed it. Asset division yeah. or whatever. But he, they, he won't give it up is what it, yeah. I think it is. He's just being a greedy bastard. Um, but they even talk about how the kids, um, they know him now. They've had a chance to get to know him, you know, as a person. And they all like him now. Um, but Barry is such a small, bald bastard. I mean, a man who literally has got no, no balls at all, because... Does he have no balls or small balls? I mean, like, literally none, because um, they say that any time they drop the kids off or pick the kids up and Ken's with her, like, Ken will get out and be make sure, like, he's available to say hello or shake yeah. hands or whatever, and Barry won't even look yeah. at Ken. Yeah. And that is so stupid and immature. It's and been, instead of a year and a half, right? Yeah, it's been two years two year. since this has gone on. Yeah. They've been together a year and a half. Yeah. So it's not like they just started dating and then he's like, oh, whatever, this guy. It's time for him to get used to the idea that she's moved on, they are together, and you need to be... And he needs to find someone. And even if that's not where he's at, maybe he doesn't want to be with anybody anymore, and that's fine. Yeah. But he needs to be okay with her moving on. Exactly. You know, because you can feel that hostility, and that does seep into the kids. Because you can tell he's hostile about it. And if you don't even look at Ken, there's hostility. Yeah. No, I totally agree. 
I mean, as a man, I mean, you've been there, you know, the ex-husband, and you always tried to be available. I was Ken. You were Ken, yeah. and tried to be available to be, you know, respectful to the father and acknowledge his place, And but he was just a spiteful prick who would always think, call you, like, I think yours derogatory probably, nickname. I think yours is worse than what Barry. Your well, yeah, ex is worse than Barry. He would actually talk shit. And maybe Barry does, but we don't see that on camera. And we don't hear nothing about it either. Right, because, you know, they don't interview the kids much. Well, and Kim, and Kim doesn't say anything about it either. Kim can be like, well, he calls them names and all kinds of bad right, things. Right, true. And she doesn't, so. But they, they kind of hypothesize that maybe if Barry gets a girlfriend, he'll chill out his attitude and stop being such a... He doesn't even have to have a girlfriend. Just get just, over it. No, just a just the, the friend. Just go and get friends. Yeah, I mean... Instead of hanging out with your kids all the time. Who knows? Barry may have, like, a Goonies type of close friendship with a group of dudes in that town that they've, you know, been together since they were... Like, wait, kindergarten. Oh, come on. I don't know about all that. Stop. I'm talking about, like, some buddies. Like, they go bowling or sing karaoke or whatever it is the dudes do in Georgia. Probably not karaoke. I don't know. You know what I mean. Yeah. But maybe he does. We don't see it. He does not let anything about his life right outside of his immediate family there known he doesn't really talk about his parents or his siblings or his job or his his you know his his hobby is nothing exactly they don't yeah they don't talk about his personal life at all no and so it's like we don't it, it's it's so unfair to barry really because we only see that little bit of his personality in his life yeah but if that's all he's willing to show us what do you expect yep I mean, you know, that's all. That's the only thing we can have an opinion about is what we her. see. Yeah, what yeah. We and he does have some control over what he says to them. I mean, like he can yeah. give us more information. He could be more forthcoming to let us get to know him better. So that maybe more people would be on his side. But of course, a lot of people just hate Kim, so they automatically oh. get buried just because they hate her. And I don't understand what the hate for Kim is. I, don't. I really don't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. I would watch her. her a bit for the boat. Just because there are three adolescent girls or pre-adolescent girls in that little tiny space half the time, and there's no privacy. There, I don't know. But but they would judge her if she would have jumped right in the bed with Ken. That had been worse than the boat. And uh, but again, I agree about the independence thing. I just don't know if the boat was the best. I would have rather her bought a trailer, like a mobile home, something like that, or anything. But I, I don't know. It's a maybe. It's just. That's her again. We talked last episode about how that's her safety net because that's how she grew up. Yeah. So. But she does she have them every, all the time? Like every half the time. Oh yeah, she should actually. I think in my my opinion, maybe be a little bit closer too. What do you mean? Like a little, oh. little closer. Yeah, because then she's like forty five minutes or something from where they lived, where she lives. I don't maybe. No, which that's that's not too bad, I guess. When you're maybe I'm you don't know about their that exes, too. but either. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So then after the first commercial, um, we're in Phoenix, Arizona with Olivia and her sister, Lydia, not to be mistaken with Lydia Plath. Okay, <laughs> for any of you who may have forgotten or whatever, there are two Lydias and we are going to be talking about Lydia and Olivia's sister right now. Spoiler alert, though, the other Lydia is on this episode. I know, we haven't seen her in so long and she's so cute. I love her. So is Isaac, just so you know. Okay, so and they're outside doing yoga and um, they've been separated. Okay, and this is where she talked about how she's been separated from Ethan for about nine months um, and she's still shooting weddings while living in LA because that's where she lives now yeah. and she says that she considered herself divorced since she left Ethan so for this whole time she has considered herself to be divorced but legally she's not well obviously but I mean I'm, emotionally she felt divorced you know and that's legally, a big she thing she can't marry somebody else right now because she's not legally divorced yet no, but I'm saying, like, emotionally, she felt that disconnect, oh, know. you know. and she, I don't even think she felt connected to him, period. No, not the way he loved her. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Um, And so they were just in, in uh, Lydia's bedroom talking, and they're talking. And Olivia references Lydia's giant box of condoms multiple times. And so basically, in her own Olivia way, she's basically calling her sister a hoe yeah. on national television. And, and her and her sister is probably like, yeah, okay. so. But I think her sister is so, like, it was in such trying to, like, seemingly innocent conversation that she didn't realize that her sister was calling her a giant hoe on TV. And if it were my sister, I'd be like, listen, bitch, me and you's going to go out and do some yoga in the pool while I hold you under for a few minutes. You know, they could have, and just then 
just edit that out. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I thought it was a little bit rude, in my opinion. You know, but I think a lot of what Olivia says is a little backhanded and, you know, or, sneaky, diggy. You know what I mean? Or maybe her sister took it as a compliment. Yeah, maybe it's like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, cause you know, I'm not, don't get me wrong, ladies. I have no problem with a woman getting hers. If a guy can go out and get whatever he wants from the, from his sexual partners, a woman can too. Sexual freedom at all, okay? Be safe, please. Use condoms and protection and all that out yeah, there. Olivia's sister did. Exactly. She's being or safe. Does. So, I mean, good for her, in my opinion. Yeah. But I just think, like, she was basically alluding. Like, oh, my God, that giant box of condoms. <laughs> and you, like, guys rub upon you in the bar. How? And, uh, oh, come on. Like. How old is her sister? She's younger than her. I think she's only, like, 22 or 20. Olivia's 25. So she's, like, our li our lizard's age. And Olivia is, like, our Mallow's age. So it's. They're they're young, but not they're the same age, the same age difference. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Um, so then after the second commercial, um we see that Mariah is working as a bartender and server in Tallahassee, Florida at Giorgio's. I don't know I never, what exactly yeah. that does in Georgia or Florida actually. It sounds like a fancy restaurant. It looks really nice. Yeah. If you all live in the Tallahassee area, go hang out at Giorgio's. I don't know if Mariah still works there. Mm -hmm. She only seems to work there for like a week or two during filming just to have something to show that she's working. Um, knew, she might not be working. They just might have rented it out and made it look like she's working. Who knows? But hang out at Giorgio's. It looks yeah. really nice. Their food looked good. Um, and she said that money equals freedom, and that is absolutely a thousand percent true. The more money you have, the more freedom you have to do what you want. And I know she's also doing this to help her music career, too. Because, well, and she said yeah. she's saving to record her music. Because yeah. um, I was thinking myself, I was watching this, I'm thinking, yeah. what happened to her music career? You know, because she has this one hit, yeah. Circus, I think no, that was right. Yeah, it was her album. Her album, all right. Um, and one song that I've only heard, I didn't hear anything yeah. else on her album. Uh, and haven't heard nothing else since. Yeah, I about just, Mariah. And I, then I, Mariah's songs are good. She just needs a producer who can put them together in a more marketable way. Yeah, they're they're a bit too raw for a commercial music, and you know, to be pop to be popular. Um, so I mean, I think she needs to get with a good record producer to kind of get like refine her songs to make them more marketable yeah um because yeah, they're not bad songs at all it's just the way maybe and i think she needs to grow into her voice more too yes yeah and that a... sounds so whiny and nasally when she sings yeah she needs to learn to use her her diaphragm yeah yeah so felt that shit maybe somebody told her that and that's what she's doing and if that's the case good for her Right. I mean, it makes you happy. And if she's willing to work hard and do it, yeah. I mean, God she's bless young her. young enough to, to work at it. dream, like you said. Um, and she said that serving and being a bartender makes her be more social, which she needs, because she's, like us, kind of a homebody. I'd rather stay home and hang out with my dog. And my and 20, how old? Three? Yeah, I think. That's weird. I know that's how she was brought up. Lizard's the same way, and she's that age. Lizard's got... Mental sickness. Well, so does Mariah. She has severe depression. Well, oh, yeah, true. But I mean, I don't know. I think 23, you should want to go out there and hang out with your friends and stuff more. I do. I, I think that. I did. That's, I did too. That's when I met you. Well, I was 27. Yes, but I was 23. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 20 okay. years ago. So, while the little girls are visiting Kim, uh, Barry is hanging out at home with Micah, Mariah, Lydia, and Isaac, and Ethan is on his way. Yep. And when he's he was visiting after his uh, awful visit with Olivia in Minnesota. What game was that they were playing? I've never seen that before. I have no idea. No clue. They look, they, yeah, I have no idea. If y'all know, and if you can explain it to us, please yeah. do, because I was... Like, trying to, like, concentrate on the show, take my notes and all that stuff. At the same time, I'm looking at that going, what? Yeah, it's like, what is that? It's like the pieces of something. Like, like get the line up the numbers. And yeah, yeah. Maybe it's kind of like gin, but with tiles. And uh, not cards. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather play those cards. Me too. It'd be too complicated with scrabble pieces. But, yeah, I, that's not the guess. I'm, I'm happy yeah. based on the little tiny bit we saw, but I don't know. If you all know... Educate us, please, because we're always curious about yeah, things like that. Yeah, let us know. Let us know in the comments. Um, 
So Ethan admits, and this is a big thing because Ethan never knows how to talk about his feelings or yeah. really even name his feelings half the time. Um, but he admits that he doesn't know how to talk about everything that's going on. Um, and that he doesn't want to feel like a burden or like he's bothering others with his problems. Like show up and be like, oh, I'm dumping all my crap on you, you know? And I think a lot of us feel that way. That's a social anxiety thing. Yeah. Um, and I think most people are like, oh God, I feel like a bother and I don't, you know, I don't want to like be a burden and all that stuff. But I'm so proud of him for actually opening up and talking. And if that's the show that made it happen, then I think that's a great thing. He needs his beard back. He looks so young. And I I just keep picturing him with our lizard because she just loves him. And I think they would be so cute and good together. They're both awkward. But but they're, they'd be so cute. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying they're, they're both awkward. good people. And they're sweet. And they're kind. And they're giving. And that's exactly the kind of each one needs. You know, but someone could end up on the show. I don't care about that. I'm talking about, you know me. I just want people to be happy. I'm a mom. I'm, I'm, you know, yeah. Anyway, so Ethan tells the group, okay, yeah, that about his about the divorce happening, and okay, everyone's looking sad and really awkward, but no one looks surprised. I don't think anybody looked sad. Well, they were for him. They looked because he could tell he was miserable. They looked like they were holding back smirks. Some of them. I. I don't think so. I think they were just like they awkward because they, 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 they he announced yeah. it like, oh my god, it's a surprise, and they're like, yeah, um, we thought that was already happening. Yeah, yeah. we thought that was over and done with by now. Yeah, so th- it was a little bit funny there. I just chuckled at the at them because they're all so awkward sometimes. And they did feel bad for they did. for Ethan. Yes, they don't feel bad for Olivia. They don't feel bad for themselves not seeing it. Olivia anymore. Yeah, none of them miss her, I don't think, at this point. But I, I know they all feel sorry about what happened between them, though. Yeah, for, for Ethan. Yeah. So after the, the third commercial, <laughs> Ethan does acknowledge that he gave them up for Olivia, but that they're still there for him, and she's not. Yeah. And then they all show that their support for him, you know, if they need anything, please call, all that kind of stuff. And I love that because, again... Even last season, they had so much trouble just acknowledging feelings and saying, hey, I'm here for you. Yeah. You know, so th- th- there's so much growth that's happened since last season, and it makes me so happy in my heart for them as a mom. Um, and I hope that means that they're going to have more, like, open conversations, because you don't get a lot of that. You get snippets of information in the interviews, but when they're talking to each other, it's a lot of empty words, and there's nothing actually being said. You notice tonight I realized the only one that was being interviewed was Olivia and Kim. A little bit in the beginning. Yeah. But they didn't really interview anybody else. No, because it was all actual interactions between yeah. people, which yeah. was nice. I'd rather have Well, that. a little bit with Mariah and her little yeah. her segment. But that was about it. There wasn't like a lot of interviewing going on at all. No. I prefer the interactions with the people. I, I do too. Yeah. Um, and, and Ethan said, and I quote, it's nice to have someone to talk to. And for Ethan, oh, that, oh my God. Well, he was at That's his huge. place for nine months alone. Yeah, pretty much. No, I'm sure he was traveling back and forth. All right, I'm, I don't think so. I think he pretty much stayed in Minnesota. So do you think the only time he travels back and forth is when we're doing the show? Yep. So he doesn't, uh, he doesn't... I don't think so. No, because I think... Because remember, Micah went up to see him, and Mariah went up to see him for a while, and um, they all kind of went there to see him because the grandparents are also there. Yeah. So... Which we haven't seen yet. But you probably won't. No. We probably would have seen him by now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then um, Ethan's talking to his dad, and Barry is trying in his awkward, creepy way to be supportive of Ethan. Barry, don't give any advice. Even though it's a, he does it in a very condescending way about women. Yeah. Um, Ethan admits that he's been depressed, and I quote, for a while. So the reason he isolated himself and only went to the gym and the and work and worked on his cars was because he was depressed. He's sad. He's miserable. And he's been stuck and alone with that for all these months. And I think you might have been a little embarrassed, too, around his family because he gave them up for her. Yeah. You know, like and you said, even a minute, family rich. Exactly, yeah. But he gave them up, had this whole big ordeal with them in their yard, in their driveway, back what season one and a season one, I think it was yep. season two, whatever. 
you know, and I'm sure he's embarrassed by all that. Oh, yeah. I mean, regrets, man. Yeah. I mean, again, hindsight's twenty twenty. We've all been there. We've all made stupid mistakes. Like, there's this great meme on Facebook that's, like, this guy looking through these pages and having, like, the big notebook. And it's, like, me looking back at all my life choices and going, why? You know? Because we've all done it. You know? Yeah. That's how you learn and grow, especially when you're young. He's only 25. Yeah. And he seems like he's our age. You know? He's got, like, a little old. He's, like, he's lost his entire spirit. And that, you know, I want to just give it back to him so bad. Stop smirking at me in that little old spirit. He is a, he's like an old man spirit and like this young body. And I just want to give him a hug. Well, I just hope we don't have to see his temper this season. Like we have in past seasons. At least not directed toward anybody that doesn't really deserve it. Yeah. He likes to direct it all at one person. Like Mariah for one. Or his mother. Well, it was more like one of those seasons was like all Mariah because Mariah. Yeah, that was last season. Yeah. yeah. And they actually even talk about that too. And then, okay. So this is the interesting part, you guys. And I, I think it's all made up for the show. I think the producers or, told the lady what to say. Or maybe the lady was a producer. Or, you know, she's a uh, fan of the show, yeah. or whatever. Or maybe but, she's a fan of the podcast. Maybe yeah. you're out there. We want to hear from you. If you guys know any tarot Thank readers, you, we might do a different reading about these guys. I would love to hear that. Tarot lady. So Olivia and Lydia, her sister, not Lydia Plath, uh, visit a tarot card reader. And so these are her predictions. For Olivia, she predicts a long life. And she says that Olivia is a water soul and she likes to live by water. Um, and that she has an angel brother guiding her and watching over her. And that part's sad. And then, you know, Olivia talks about how her, about going back for her brother's funeral and how, you know, that was weird because she focused on all in the religion thing. And that kind of irritated me because it's a funeral. That's not, you know, just. That's, well, well, you're well, focusing well, on the wrong thing. If my that's opinion. what her family focused on. And I said, she even, she even said that. And her brother was that was in that religion. And he didn't die suddenly. He committed suicide. And he another person that was died. Was the one that was on the show? No, no. Okay. Was, no, different, different, that was for wives. That was no, 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 no. There, but her brother, was that her? No, no, no. Okay. Different brother. Okay. And that's the one that was on the show. Okay. Um, but again, that's why we're doing suicide awareness and prevention on the show. We're dedicating the entire season to it. Um. We will have links if you need help. You can do star 911 to text with someone if you need assistance, or you can call 911 on your phone. Yeah. Or, sorry, not 911. 988. I apologize. 988 on your phone. You can text or call that to talk to someone if you can get help. All that information will be on the links and everything down below. Um, anywho, so the prediction she, uh, says that she has trust issues due to abandonment and tells her to move on from them, that it's in the past. And that's good advice. It's hard to do. Yeah. It's easier said than done. But, um, yeah, letting letting the stuff from your past oh. control your future in any way is my thing I've tried so hard to change in my life, from the abuse and the drug and alcohol abuse and all the things that were in my past, I, I've striven really hard to make sure that those things don't carry into my future. Yeah. Or um, present. Or, or present. Yeah. So, you know, I get that. But it's it's hard. It's, it's a day, it's a conscious decision to do those things, especially when you have to get over abandonment issues and mm -hmm. trust issues. Um, and then she says that she will only be married once and she will have two children. Um, and she tells her to be patient and to give him time to grow and that they will each have two relationships in the next two years, and then they'll get back together. But she's only going to be married once. Yes, which but, means that she can be, she'll only be married to one man. Oh, okay. Which means so she, she could be, be, be oh, okay, married okay. Ethan. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And then she says that Ethan will come and go from her life, and obviously with the show, we believe that to be true. Yeah. You know, just that's the only time they see each other is you're filming. And then she says that Olivia sometimes feels a fool about um, wasting her time or love on this. Um, and I think we've all felt that way after a relationship has ended that we thought was going to be, you know, forever. You know, I don't think she thought it was going to be forever. Not Olivia. In the very beginning, you don't think so? Maybe the very, very beginning, you know, like very beginning. When they first got married before okay. the show. Yeah, but I think after the show started, you know, and all the... I don't. I think she fell in love with him a long, long time ago. Yeah, I think. I think you. You're, you don't. You don't get over somebody. Different. You don't get over somebody that quick. 
if you haven't already f gone over him. I agree. I because I got divorced and that's how I felt. I was over him way before the divorce happened. Um, and at the end, um, she said that she was not at all happy with her reading, and she said, "quote I don't want that, so I'm not gonna do that." Uh, regarding remarrying Ethan and being with him in the future. And my thought about that is, okay... Sometimes you might not have a say in it. Like, are you going to sabotage yourself? Like, what if that's meant to be and you're going to be super crazy happy in a couple of years after you've both been through a couple of relationships and changed and grown and come back together? Maybe you know? this lady was giving but, a spoiler alert. But is she, like, going to, like, consciously say, oh, no, I'm not going to do that because been there, done that, and I'm not going to do it again, yeah. and maybe ruin her only chance of happiness? Because that's how sometimes people go too far the other way in trying to control things. And we all know that Olivia likes control. Oh, yeah. That's all she's about. So, yeah, um, we'll just see in a couple of years if they're still filming, if these predictions come true. And if so, that lady is going to be a millionaire because everyone's going to be flocking to her door. Maybe she just giving us spoiler alerts. Well, maybe. We, who knows? I mean, that's what a a future tarot reading is is yeah. supposed to be a spoiler alert in your life. So, but maybe she's doing it for the show because she said in two years that could be season eight. It could be, and will we be here to talk to you about it? We sure hope so. Yeah, we sure do. But you know what, guys? That's the end of the episode, and that is the end of uh, what we wanted to talk to you about today. We're trying to keep them short and sweet for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, comments, all that good stuff, please leave them at any one of our any one of our number of places you can go to, such as YouTube, Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay? All right. That's a lot of it's a lot of platforms. A lot of platforms you can go to to find us. And we're all there, Big Mama's House podcast. And we love you guys. And uh, we hope you had a great week. And we'll see you next time. Until next time. Bye. Bye.